and uh, good morning to you all. Um, I'm glad you could make it. Um, I hope that we would start and end all of this in a secure way so that we can move our, ourselves forward, uh, knowing that we can rest easy because we have the tools to keep ourselves safe in this uh, electronic world that we find ourselves in. So as you said, my name is Agatha uh, Morty. I trained in the UK as a uh, mechanical engineer at the University of London. But then I converted into IT. I set up an IT company in London in 2003 after I started IT in 1999. I was working at the University In 2008, um, I moved the company to Accra and started trading here and servicing clients. So what we basically do is um, support businesses in their IT infrastructure. Businesses um, employ us to look after different aspects of their IT infrastructure. And whenever there is an issue whatsoever, we deal with it and we find solutions. Now, IT is constantly, daily um, changing and developing, and there are new things happening all the time. So we took a different view to being ahead of the game, and that is knowing how to know rather than knowing. If I know how to fix this thing, that's just one part of it. I know how to operate it right now. But what happens tomorrow when it changes? Um, how quickly can I be ahead of the game? So you have to think that you need a different kind of skill. And that is a skill of being able to adapt. Most of the time, we, we, we've all, all heard the saying, it is the survival of the fittest. Actually, it is not the survival of the fittest. It is the survival of the most adaptable. So you have animals that are not as fit as the lion, but because when the rains stop, they know how to store fat in their body to carry them through the dry periods. When the lion is running around with his strong muscles and doesn't have food to eat, these animals who have adapted are able to survive. So it's, that's the same way we see IT. It's survival of the most adaptable. You can see things changing all the time and you are flexible enough and have an open mind enough to be able to adapt as those things, as those adaptations are taking place. So we say we know how to know. Beyond all of that, IT is simple, even though it seems complicated. Everything can be boiled down to a zero or a one. Everything whatsoever can be boiled down to either a zero or a one. The camera is using single aspect of it, you will get either a zero or a one. It's either switched on or switched off. So if you, you're thinking about things being complicated, just break it down one step at a time and you see that it becomes very simple. That's why we have simplicity there. Now, the purpose of this seminar is to get you to think about the weaknesses that allow cyber criminals and cyber scams to operate within our um, daily lives these days on several different levels and to give you some tools and present some options on how you can work around these and how you can adapt that's that word again, adapt your behaviors so that you're not um, subject to these crimes. 
and subject to these scams. We want to have you get a base thinking. Today, um, we've done this before, but today I'm coming with a different theme. There's a base thinking that goes throughout all cyber security. And that's what I'm going to focus on today. So we will get to that, that point. But think that it, it, it goes back to that thing of knowing how to know. Have something that you can always go back to that will get you through. Because when you have a, a cyber world that is constantly, you're constantly being bombarded with different things from different ways, how do you, where is, I mean, the Christians will say, where is your Jesus Christ that you can go, always go back to and say, this is my, my root. Or where is your God that you can go back to and say, um, I, I'll use a little bit of ever for those of you who know ever. Neglokra, that means if, if everything else fails, where do you go? What do you do to get you through and make sure that you're not subject to any of this? So we will, we will get to that point. Now, cyber criminals, they want something from you. And what it boils down to is either a zero or a one. You're either losing or you're winning. And that thing they want from you are resources, things that they can use to steal from you. Resources, what it boils down to is getting things that they can use to gain from you. So whatever happens, in the end, they are coming, that they are coming for your resources. And they do it by invading your space, invading your, your, your identity, stealing your identity, stealing information from you so that they can use it to get to your resources. And eventually, in, in the worst forms, they want to blackmail you. They want to, to put you in a position where you will feel that you have no other option but to succumb to what they are looking for, which is your information, your resources. Now, who here has ever been scammed before? Anyone? No one's been scammed before in any sort of form. You have been. Okay. Your name, please, sir. Richard. Richard. Can you share with us how you got scammed? I have a story how I got scammed. Okay. Sure. Yeah. It was a, a link I saw on a Telegram page, <laughs> and then I subscribed to the link, and then it led me to another link. But no, no, it was a scam. Before I realized, all my money, my mobile money, I can't have it. Can you tell me what the link was about? Uh, it was about this world remit something. World remit. Yeah. And the, what did they promise to give you? It was you put in 100 CDs, you get 10% off the amount. Okay. So it was like you give, you get more. You okay. Give, you get more. Great. Okay. Sir, um, please, can you share with us how you got scammed? Okay. Uh, a mobile money uh, fraud, mm -hmm. but uh, I tried. They called me and says uh, uh, something was happening somewhere, and I needed somebody. I knew needed some money. Right. So I, for me to be safe, I decided to send five percent of the money they needed, so that I will see whether it's actually from the person. Right. After that, they actually show by the person name that everything came. But when I called the person through a different number, it wasn't the one. Right. But they succeeded in taking my 5%. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Also, another story. Our facility was called a denial of service. About a year ago, I told us that our, one of our employees on a Saturday like this, they went to a website and they opened the door. Even though we had a firewall, it's like you have a door, 
your door is fireball, but if you open the door and you leave it open, the criminals can come in. So they were able to deny our service. But later on, we were able to recover some of our data and have updated our system. Yes. And another story before, about 15 years ago, I had something called Hotmail. So I was uh, browsing a website, it looked like uh, BBC. So these people were looking as if they were BBC, but they were not BBC, I realized later on. Then the computer said, oh, I have to log in again. Mm -hmm. Like any time you get a glitch where you say log in again, mm -hmm. don't do that, because these are the spies. So what you do, you go out and restart again. Yeah. Uh, and they took over my, my hotmail, but uh, I think Microsoft, they suspected something, so later on I was able to recover. So my hotmail is 30 years old and still working. All right, great. Now I have a story myself. I got, I got scammed, but it wasn't um, it wasn't a cyber criminal. It was a really close friend that I had been working with for five years, and I knew him very well. And he. He, he promised me some business in some other part of Africa, but I needed to set up certain things in that business. And through him, I gave him all the way up to $16,000 when I put it all together to set up this business so that we, can, uh, we had a contract going available. And up to today, I haven't got a penny back. And he's still my friend. And every day he promises me, oh, I'll pay you. For, for the last four years, he hasn't paid me. Now, what I want to point to you is that when anybody wants to scam you, this is a difficult one to understand. It comes from your own or one of your employees' greed. I have to admit it, I was greedy. That's why my friend managed to scam me. He was concerned about a friend who was in trouble and he wanted to help that friend, beloved friend. And that's why they were able to get him. You were looking for some extra quick money and that's why they were able to get you. So when I'm telling you about getting back to your Jesus or getting back to your God, remember, when it all gets down to the bottom, it is your own or one of your own's greed that will get you scammed. If you are able to resist that greed, you will not get scammed. If you can get back to the idea that I need to work honestly and well and well considered to get what I deserve, you will not get scammed. If you want something quick or you're desperate to just get money or you have a scarcity mentality and feel that things are not available, you will get scammed. So when you look back at it, at any time you've been scammed, and you drill down and you're honest to yourself, you will find out that it was your own greed in some way that got you into that position. And if you can accept that that's where the mistakes are made, then it means that you also have the ability to fix it. Because you were the one who caused it, so you were the one who, you were the one who can fix it. So whatever the cyber criminals are sending, bombarding you with, go back to that your your God and your place of honesty with yourself. That I'm going to work hard and I'm going to deserve whatever is coming to me, and I'll be fine. But if I'm going to just get something quick you will lose everything. So that's why I've put the word greed here. And it is very difficult for many people to understand, but please, this is the best way to protect yourself, is by not being greedy. 
So bear that in mind as we go forward. Now, cyber criminals, they are playing on this grid and they have entry points. And as we know, it's all electronic, so it comes from these three devices. Of all these, of all, of all these three, network devices are probably the most secure because they're usually set up by IT professionals like myself and others. So, and they come with inbuilt protection from people trying to invade from the outside. But most of the time, these devices, a laptop, a desktop, a handheld device, those devices are not greedy. It is the users that are greedy. Do you won't find those, the greed in the devices, you find them in the users. And that is the reason why when we get onto them, then we impart our greed into these things and we open up doors, as he said, for people to come through. And all of these happen when they're connected to the internet. Now, how do they work? Sometimes when you lose your devices, and every, throughout this whole thing, I'll come back to those, those, those greed things. Many times, when you lose your device, it's because you're in a hurry. You need to do something, and you, so you forget. You were in a hurry, that comes with an element of greed. I want to get this place far. Take your time, life is going nowhere. Or theft, that as well, you have left yourself open, someone has stolen some, something from you. Social engineering uh, on um, social media. You find many times people on social media trying to look good, they're trying to impress. They're trying to create an impression of who they are not or how wonderful their life are, is. Why? Because they want the likes. Because they want affirmation. That comes with uh, 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 an element of greed. Fishing is a word you hear very often. And fishing is one of the main ways in which they are able to get into networks from all the devices. Phishing is when they send emails or other links that are not correct, that lead you to places where um, malicious content is able to be deployed onto your devices. So you see an email saying, um, as he said, uh, put in 100 CDs and you get a thousand or something of that nature and you click on it uh, whoa I'm, I'm having a little bit of a problem right now you click on it and then it opens up what leads into things like malware and ransomware it, it, they deploy this onto a network and then what happens you are infected your whole network however you're connected you get infected. Zero day, day exploits. This is something where, as things are adapting and moving all the time, the criminals are ahead of the game many of the times. So on the very first day when they create these things, they deploy them. And the companies that um, uh, manufacture the software and the, uh, the systems, don't know about them yet. So that's day zero, the first day. So the systems become vulnerable and then people quickly get um, duped by these new, very, very new um, deficiencies in the system.